Jerry Springer was the in undisputed king of the talk show. Smart, intelligent, a TV icon. He was also a politician, a lawyer, an actor. He could do it all. I spent nearly every day for two years with him on the set of America's Got Talent. We stayed in the same hotel in Beverly Wilshire in Los Angeles. We used to sit by the pool talking about politics. We'd have dinner talking about politics. He loved arguing about politics. He'd been a mayor before he ever became a TV star. And he was most definitely uncensored. Jerry has what? more ass than you do. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show. Thank you, and welcome to America's Got Talent. We have daddy issues, so we'd like to get our dairy beef. I care about people. I care about people who watch television. And on that note, take care of yourself and each other. Well, today, Jerry's family said Jerry's ability to connect with people was at the heart of his success in everything he tried, whether that was politics, broadcasting, or just joking with people on the street who wanted a photo or a word. He's irreplaceable, and his loss hurts immensely. But memories of his intellect, his heart, and his humour will live on. And he brought his usual warmth and energy to regular guests on all my shows that I did ever since we did that talent show together. Do you think Matthew McConaughey and this extraordinary speech could actually affect change? Certainly, it'll have some impact. But the fact is, the American people are virtually all, or pretty close to all in agreement on the major idea of some kind of gun control. What can Trump do to try and persuade you now that he's a unifier and not a destroyer? Well, just personally, I, I would... I will do everything I can to see that he becomes a successful president. I think I may stop because there are other things I want to do. I want to spend more time with Richard, my grandson, and follow him in baseball and basketball and do things like that. So it's more that decision more than a medical decision. Jerry could talk about anything, and he could talk about it for hours, and he was always entertaining, always funny, and always razor smart, always knew exactly what was going on. He was also a great friend, and I'll give you just two little examples of that. One, uh, he was doing, I think it was Richard and Judy, a few years ago with Amanda Holden, who was doing Britain's Got Talent with me. And Amanda put me on the phone to him. I said, Jerry, what are you doing tonight? He said, nothing. I said, do you want to come to my middle son's school? They're doing Sound of Music and Amanda's host and uh, me and Michael Gray, who's a big media mogul in Britain, we're dressing up as nuns and we need a Catholic priest to dress up as a Catholic priest. He went, I'm Jewish. I went, I know you are. He said... My rabbi would be fine with it. And he came down and he went on stage as a Catholic priest with me as a nun. And we sang Sound of Music songs. And then a little later after that, I have an annual cricket match against my little village down in East Sussex. And I said, Jerry, what are you doing on Sunday? He went, nothing. I went, fancy a game of cricket? He went, I'd love one. And he came all the way down to the south coast of England and we played cricket. And the villagers absolutely loved him. And in fact, on our village WhatsApp chat today, a lot of sadness because they all remembered how down to earth this TV legend was. Everyone knew Jerry Springer. So that was the real guy away from TV. There were no flies on Jerry. He, what you saw was what you got. And it, he was one of the great guys. Well, joining me on the phone now is my fellow Talk TV presenter and my fellow former America's Got Talent judge, Sharon Osbourne, and the former director of security, of course, on the Jerry Springer show turned talk show host himself now, Steve Wilkos. Uh, well, Sharon, let me start with you. Um, you know, Jerry, we worked with him, didn't we? Hand in glove, really, for two years. It's very intense on those shows. You get to know each other really, really well. I remember, and I'm sure you do, the time we all first met each other was a dinner thrown oh, by NBC you, where you lost your I rag. I knew you were going to start. Go well, on. Let's start where we mean to go on, because it was so fitting, because we'd all had this quiet dinner, and then you lost your rag with me and began to actually physically throttle me. And at that point, Jerry got up and said, this reminds me of one of my shows, and led you away. <laughs> he did. He took me outside and he said, take some breath. Now I want you to go home and think about this. And I said, yes, Jerry. And um, he was just amazing with me. He, I mean, listen, in our religion, we call him a mensch, and that's what he is. I mean, just a fantastic human being. He, I loved the way he always ended his show on a, on a great speech. You know, m morally, it was always a takeaway mm. from his show. 
So it wasn't just, you know, people going crazy at each other, throwing things and whatever. There was a, always a good moral at the end of his show. And you know what? I, I uh, just, sorry, Sharon, go on. So, no, I'm just saying that he will be missed. He was a pioneer on daytime TV. Yeah. Yeah, and he used to say, he used to joke, it's the worst show in the world, but it was also one of the most popular and one of the most lucrative, made him extremely rich. But he always had a great warmth and was very protective towards all the people that came on. And let me go to, to yeah. Steve. Let me go to Steve now. Um, Steve, I'm so sorry for your loss because you were so closely aligned with Jerry for so long and you made a very moving statement today. How, how are you doing today since you heard the news? It's tough. Um... I love Jerry and uh, one of my closest friends. And, you know, I still uh, can't believe that I'm never going to talk with him again. You know, he used to talk jokingly about the show, but obviously it became this complete phenomenon. Um, what did you make of, the, of why it was so popular? How much of that was the guess? How much of that was Jerry? Was it just the, the combination, really? Yeah. yeah, I think it was just a crazy point in time. And... You know, when I watched the opening of your show today and you were talking about cancer culture, I wonder how far we would have got today yeah. in the landscape of today with that show. Yeah. Um, listen, I, you know, I think Jerry was just a, a natural draw. People are drawn to him. He's very kind. Uh, people love Jerry. I mean, loved him. And, uh, you know, the craziness on the show, we were we were doing stories and, and things that, you know, you couldn't see anywhere else on TV at the time. Uh, so I think it was a confluence of things and the show just took off like a rocket. And I, I've been saying, you're probably never going to see anything like that again, because, you know, when we, the show was so popular, it wasn't internet, there wasn't streaming, you know, nowadays, if something's big and huge, it's big and huge for five minutes. Right. And then there's something else where back then, you know, he was the Zenith for two years. We're beating Oprah and, and everything else. Um, so to be around him, I I felt like it must have been like hanging around Elvis Presley. Or well, well, what about this, Steve? What about this uh, anecdote I'll tell you, which was I had dinner with, with Jerry in LA soon after we began working together. And he told me a story that Muhammad Ali was an avid fan of the show. And I've got to be honest, I didn't know Jerry that well. I just didn't believe him. I thought it was Hollywood bullcrap, to be honest. And we walked back from Mr. Charles in Beverly Hills to the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, about a five, ten minute walk. And we get to the valet parking area to go to the back wing where we both had rooms. And a limousine pulls up. I swear this is true. I wrote about it in my diary at the time. A limousine pulls up and out gets Muhammad Ali and his wife. I've never met Muhammad Ali in my life. And as they get out of the door, she sees Jerry, uh, Muhammad's wife, and she just shouted, Oh my God, Jerry Springer! Pause. He's still watching the show. And <laughs> Muhammad Ali came over. Jerry introduced me to the greatest. And I yeah. said, I hear you love the Springer show. He went, I, I love it. I love all the fighting. And then we, we all laughed. And I said, please tell me you love America's Got Talent too. And it was kind of a little <laughs> bit less committal on that. But it just showed me, A, I could always trust Jerry Springer after that. Uh, but B, that everyone and anyone used to watch the Springer show. Yeah, not a lot of people admitted it, but uh, everybody did watch it. And, uh, you know, I met Muhammad, too. And, you know, Muhammad told me he was a big fan, so I know that for a fact. But, uh, you know, you're just... They have a show that peaked so, so highly where everybody talked about it. You know, we, most young people won't understand what we say about Water Cooler Show. Yeah. Everybody talked about that show, and... Uh, I, I feel very fortunate to be around Jerry and got to share that incredible ride with him. Uh, just, you know, we were we were doing movies and, you know, Leno and Letterman and... Everything, yeah. Just traveling all over the world with him. And, yeah. uh, you know, to get to experience that with him. And, and you couldn't do it with a nicer guy. No, uh, we, I was about to say... Yeah, I was about to bring Sharon back for that, Steve. Um, I want to show a little clip from America's Got Talent because we had such a laugh on that show together. This is back in like 2007, eight, I think. But let's take a look at this. Well, Pierce, the exits are here, but please tell me we're not gonna be hearing those buzzers tonight. There's no point having them, is there, Jerry, if you can't have the fun of actually pressing them. Oh. We've all got itchy fingers tonight. Oh, we'll have to God. see, have to see. <laughs> all right, but you'll be nice. I know. But we'll try nice. and be nice. Sha <laughs> Sharon, what do tonight's acts have to do in order to 
kind of impress you, impress America? Oh, my goodness. Where do we begin, Jerry? They were great days, Sharon. And the thing about Jerry Springer, oh, one, he was one of the nicest <laughs> people I've ever worked with, no question. And secondly, just the most professional. He never turned up a minute late. He, he was always did his job, do, whatever the hours, just remember, a great guy. Do you remember tears when he fell off the stage and yeah. he was hurt himself badly? The show went on. I mean, he just carried on, never missed a beat. And, you know, his show was like a guilty pleasure. Mm. Yeah. You got hooked into it. And it, it, you know what? People, there aren't many people left in the industry like Jerry, who no. was all heart, a real people person. Yeah, and what people don't know about Jerry, probably, and they'll find out when they read the obituaries, is the varied life he led before he did the Springer show. He was a news anchor. Uh, of a big TV news show for 10 years. He was the mayor of Cincinnati for a year. Yeah. Um, that ended in a bit of a scandal, which we won't go into. But he, he, he had this extraordinary life. And even at the end, nearly 80, there he was, still doing loads of stuff, doing podcasts, doing yeah. interviews and so on. But, but he did say in the final interview that we did with him only last month that he, he was looking forward, as he reached 80, to spend more time with his family, which was yeah, something he was very he was pleased always, to be doing. He was always doing charity events, too. I mean, he had such a big heart. Yeah. Well, it's a massive and loss. he's irreplaceable. Yeah, he, re he really is. He was a total one-off, and we loved him, didn't we? Sharon, thank you so much for joining me from L.A. And, Steve, thank you. And my, thank my you, deepest, my, my deepest condolences to you, Steve, because you and he were intertwined for so long. And uh, I can only imagine how you're feeling today. So I'm so glad to have you on the show. It's an honour to have you. And it was an honour for all of us to work with Jerry. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. The great Jerry Springer, who died today aged 79.